Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. It is Monday, April the 13th. I hope you had a great long holiday weekend. I know we all did. It was nice to have a little break during these uh, stressful times, but that's what we're here to talk about today. We're going to go ahead and introduce our guests. First, my co-host, Brittany Pacheco, from her, looks like you're from your nerd room today, Brittany, are you? Hey, Todd. Yes, that's correct. I'm back in my nerd room. Um, We're going to make some minor changes here and put up some new wall art but you know that'll come later this week probably Ooh, something to look forward to Brittany's gonna change her wall art so we well, let's send out something in social media because I, I want people to start picking out we'll do like a before and after like they used to do in those cartoons what's different with this look now so be looking for that we're going to talk to Brittany about that later on in a moment but first I want to introduce Dr. Manaz Kolani and Dr. Kolani, welcome to the show. She is the Director of Counseling and Ability Services at Houston Community College. Welcome here to Monday Morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Excited about being here. Absolutely. We're, we're very happy to have you on the show. And this is a this is a stressful time for all of us. You know, we're all doing something new. There's a lot of uncertainty in the world. Um, so a lot of people are questioning things right now, and, and maybe they've lost their job or they're looking for new employment. But a lot of our students are going through some stressful times. Have you guys in uh, counseling services known and or seen any uptick in the response you're getting from students? Absolutely. And as you said, this is understandable. This is a time that we really are experiencing not only a a health crisis, but also a mental health crisis as well, because people feel anxious, depressed, upset, distressed about everything that is going on. As you said, a lot of people have lost their jobs. Um, financially, um, we're experiencing hardship. Family members, again, if it didn't impact us individually in terms of loss of our job individually, but we're bound to know people in our area, in our neighborhood, in our social circle who are experiencing severe hardship. Um, and also, this is all coupled with the fact that people are worried about potentially getting this, um, you know, virus. So uh, we f- we all feel stressed, and and more than anything, the fact that our routine has changed. We like to have a routine. We like to believe that life is predictable. We like to map out our lives, and now all of it has changed. So our students are also impacted by this, and you see that. Um, almost every student that we contact through the counseling services, um, whether they come through the virtual lobby or through our um, basic needs questionnaire or just contacting the counselor, we see that they experience a lot of sort of added stress uh, associated with this pandemic. And we try to make ourselves much more available than before and uh, also knowing that our students need us we also um, sort of proactively try to reach out to our students and let them know that we're here and, and let them know that it's normal to feel stressed and feel overwhelmed and there's no shame in asking for help so we, we again we proactively try to bring this to increase this help seeking attitude in our students and let them know that it's okay to ask for help you know, you mentioned something about the importance of setting a routine, and it seems like that's extremely important during these times because our normal daily routine of getting up, going to work, or going to school, all that's been disrupted. A lot of us are confined to our houses right now. Some are considered essential workers. They may be going to work. But, you know, over the past weekend, I noticed, you know, just some slight changes to my routine, and it kind of threw everything off. Like, they closed the parks over the weekend. Couldn't do that. So I'm thinking, what am I going to do all day Saturday? So little things like that, I guess, could, for students, could really throw you off balance if you don't watch yourself and watch the others around you. Absolutely. And also the fact that we're living in households that even the whole routine of the household has changed. So, um, you know, you are you're living in a home that kids are home from school, parents are home, everybody's home, and everybody's experiencing distress as well. So even for our students, I think it's important to set boundaries and know that when, when I'm studying and this is my class time, I'm really studying. This is not like I'm not playing video games. I'm really studying. So establishing boundaries and knowing that this is a time that I have to pay attention, it's important. And that 
routine, whether you're working from home or studying from home, it's important to know that there should be a separation between, hey, this is a time that I'm actually doing this, and this is a time that I'm taking some time off to do other things that I like to do. And, and also that routine, it's important to keep in mind that we are not just, we also have to change that sort of conversation that we have ourselves about the nature of what's going on now. And instead of saying that I'm stuck at home, we want to think about it in terms of the fact that there is some sort of, uh, you know, uh, there is a purpose to it. You're doing this, there is a sense of meaning in there. We're doing this to help ourselves and help others. So it's not, I'm not just a passive person stuck at home doing nothing. I'm contributing and by keeping myself safe and keeping everybody else safe around me. And also keeping in, in mind that there is light at the end of the tunnel. And think about the times that we've had in the past that we dealt with something that was challenging to us, whether it was the lo loss of a loved one, whether it was the loss of a relationship, loss of a job. We all have gone through challenging times. And it's important to keep in mind that as we were able to overcome and heal, this will pass as well, and we will be able to grow from this and heal and get back to maybe a new normal. But this is not going to be the way of life for the rest of our lives. And it's important to keep that in mind while we're establishing that routine for the time being. You know, this isn't going to be the new normal. It is right now, but eventually we're going to get back to work, and it's probably going to be sooner than later for, for many of us. Um, let's talk about some things that I, you know, you read in social media, all these jokes like, oh, we're eating a lot more, we're drinking a lot more, um, we're sleeping a lot more. But those three things alone could signal some serious problems if you are maybe drinking more than normal or eating more than normal or just not wanting to sleep. Um, what are some other things that, that you could watch out for? Really good point, and I'm so glad you mentioned that, Tom. Um, one thing we want to keep in mind, if we, are, if we already have some mental health-related issues, if you're individuals who suffer from depression, anxiety, and stress, you are more prone to developing um, depression and anxiety and stress at this point. Um, also keeping in mind that a lot of us may not have strong support system and we do want to think about creating a list for ourselves, a list of individuals that we trust and we can go to when we need help. This could be neighbors, this could be friends, this could be your faculty if you're a student, your counselor, reaching out to them. Also some community resources in terms of reaching out to people to, to get help. It's important not to overestimate your own ability to cope. As you mentioned, for instance, people who might have a history of um, a drug or alcohol use, it is so easy to, at a time of distress, to just reach out for you know, a, a bottle or use of a substance because it's just readily available and it's what we know. But it's important to keep in mind that this is a time that we are vulnerable. And, and know the signs. If your behavior is changing, pay attention to that. Don't overestimate your ability to cope. It is normal to have, um, to be stressed. It's, it, you may need additional uh, you know, sleep. You may need additional rest. You need to show compassion towards yourself. But at the same time, recognize if it's getting to a um, sort of a, a place that signals some kind of a mental health related issue. If you're sleeping more than, way more than usual, or you see yourself isolating, um, not even wanting to talk to people, not wanting to reach out to people. If you find yourself thinking about drinking or using drugs, this is the time that you really want to be mindful and reach out for help. Because it's easy to really start feeling down and then with, with the isolation, um, it's easy, again, to kind of find yourself slipping into a dark place that may be more challenging for you. So be aware of those signals. We, we all know ourselves. We know when it's time to reach out for help. And if there are things that we can do while we are at home, I talk about journaling. Journaling is a very good way of expressing your feelings, naming your emotions. 
And there are plenty of apps out there now that help people with mindfulness and meditation. If you've never done it before, this is a time to try. And many of these apps are free, or at least have the trial period for free that you can use. Um, adopt coloring books. Studies show that individuals who just color those adult coloring books, they report reduced levels of anxiety and depression and, and improved mindfulness. So there are things that we can do at home. Um, I cannot stress that enough, that reach out to your support system, reach out to somebody if you feel that you're starting to get overwhelmed and not get out of that, that mood that may be, again, a sign of some kind of depression or anxiety. You know, you, you made a good point with reaching out to others, and I, I would imagine during this time it's good to use your cell phone, but don't just talk to someone. Use that video chat so they can see you, you can see them, especially if you're living alone. And then, you know, another thing to keep in mind, they're keeping our parks open for a reason because a lot of us need to get out of the house and practice social distancing, and I guess it's important to have those outlets where you can go run or walk or just get some fresh air. Absolutely, sit in your patio, sit, you know, sit in your front porch. Um, interestingly enough, I was reading that over the weekend that in states that have been hit hardest, um, such as New York or California, there is an increase, um, like a sharp increase in people adopting pets or fostering pets. So, uh, you know, if you have a space for that, Maybe this is a time to think about fostering a cat or a dog, or just reaching out to your pet. If you have a pet, this is a this is a you know an immense uh, sort of source of emotional support. So find something. It doesn't have to be <coughs> excuse me anything major. You know, I always tell you know, my students if you like to watch you know makeup videos on YouTube, this is the time to do it. There is not. Yeah. You know, anything, it doesn't have to be anything major, whatever gives you joy. And also it's important to um, keep, um, when I talk about journaling, every day try to identify one thing, even if it's the smallest thing, one thing that made you happy and made you joy. This could be, you know, you made your favorite sandwich and it just tasted so good, or you baked some cookies, or you talked to a friend over the phone, or as you said, a Zoom meeting, or you found a recipe that you really liked. It could be anything, but it's important to keep in mind that even in, you know, in a situation that just looks really kind of dire and bad, there is always hope, and there's always something good to look at and something that gives you joy. And it's important to be mindful of that and look for that. If you don't look for it, you may not find it. So we have to consciously try to find something good every day, even if it's just the smallest thing that you wouldn't normally pay attention to. Dr. Manaz Kolani, uh, Director of our Counseling Services, thanks for being here. I've got some numbers I want to throw out there real quickly. Um, first off, you mentioned the virtual lobby. If folks want to find you or have an, uh, something they want to talk about, they can certainly find you through the virtual lobby, and then they go to the homepage, hccs.edu. Scroll to the bottom. You'll see virtual assistance, and you can fill out a form there. And also, you have a 1-800-NATIONAL phone number you want to give for uh, assistance? Yeah. It's called Disaster Distress Helpline, and this is through SAMHSA, which is Substance Abuse and Mental Health Service Administration. The number is 1-800-985-5990. So this number is a 24-hour a day, seven days a week helpline, and it's set to help individuals who deal with some kind of national disaster or natural disaster. Um, so it was available during Harvey and now it's available during COVID-19. So you can always have access to that number, call and talk to somebody, or you can text talk with us to 66746. So talk with us to 66746 or call 1-800-985-5990.
And I also want to mention for our faculty and staff who may be watching, um, our EAP is still available for you. Absolutely give them a call and you can find them through our website. You can go to the homepage at hccs.edu and search EAP and you will be able to locate them. So keep that in mind. For students though, take advantage of the services that are there. Dr. Kolani and her staff are available for you, but don't let it get to a point where uh, you think you can't get help because you can always get help here. We wanna make sure that Dr. Kolani is available for you at all times and her staff as well. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for having me, bye-bye. Thank you. And now we're going to join by Brittany Pacheco, who is at her parents' house. And uh, Brittany, welcome back to the show. It'd be kind of cool if I could quickly move to my parents' house. Nope, but still in the oh, room. Sure. It's okay. So, yeah, yeah, here you are. You're at your house today. Yeah, but you, you, it just goes to show you don't know. It's kind of like, where's Waldo? Where's Brittany today? She's at her house. Tomorrow she may be at her parents' house. She may have her dog. She may not. You just don't know. It's a surprise every day. <laughs> yeah. It's you just never know, you know, day by day, things change. Um, but you know, Todd, I was thinking about it. We've actually been, it's been a month since we've actually been yeah. in the office. I was it's thinking crazy. about that earlier. Today is a significant day. It's the 13th. We've been in for a month. It's also my daughter's birthday and she may watch on YouTube later. She's not on Facebook so happy birthday Gabrielle um, certainly proud of her and my son but um, uh, big day I mean we've been doing this for a month now does it seem like a month no it seems like 342 years yeah yeah it seems like a while I know it's it's uh, you know and you keep thinking each week uh, maybe in the next month maybe who knows uh, right now? And it's, I'm glad we were able to get Dr. Kolani on there because there's a lot of uncertainty. And, and you know, you do find a lot of jokes in social media, like we're all going to come out of this needing Weight Watchers or we're all going to be alcoholics, you know. But, you know, those are serious matters. It's fun to joke and have your fun. But those are serious matters because I guess there's a lot of folks out there who, uh, who are, are facing some uncertainty, rightfully so. And, and that's absolutely true. Um... There's also that age old saying of you have to keep laughing from crying, um, yeah. but there are certain matters um, such as mental health wellness that's very, very serious. And there's so many people who, um, if they were not already dealing with some sort of uh, uh, mental health capacity, um, they might be experiencing those issues now since uh, we've been isolating and practicing social distancing. It's difficult. Okay. And I, I said it to I think my neighbor the other day, I said, you know, I didn't realize how much I miss seeing people, even people I don't particularly care for, but I miss <laughs> seeing people. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, you don't really realize uh, what you had until you no longer can um, practice your daily routine. But it's okay because um, we still have different tools and resources available to us um, to be able to still communicate just right now we're using a uh, webex to to do this right. live stream um we still have our some of us have weekly or daily meetings um some of us still go out and go on walks with neighbors and have our pets and you know we're going to get through this one way or another um but be sure to check on others who uh you know that are alone um just need that extra support um this is this is a trying time it really is. It is. You know, some nice things, though. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, Dr. Kolani, you know, I didn't know how much, uh, you know, that we can't go to work, how much the weird schedule I have now. Just getting outside, you know, they closed the parks over the weekend. Um, and they were serious about that. We decided to go walking across the street along Memorial. And as you get to Memorial Park, just as we're, we're walking there, not going to go in the park, the mayor shows up with police officers. And they're driving around, yeah. So we turn around, we go back down Memorial, and then we get to Buffalo Bayou and figure, well, maybe they haven't closed off the park trail. So we start walking along Buffalo Bayou. Next thing you know, police officers in cruisers are going down the trails in their cruisers on the bullhorn telling people to leave. So we turned around and we left, you know, but it's just crazy um, right now, all the things that are going on, but that really disrupts your schedule when those little things um, are taken away. You know, it shows you how much things have changed. Todd Duplantis, the rebel, rebel walker, <laughs> is determined one way or another. 
<laughs> I told a friend of mine, he's like, what have you been doing? I said, running from police all day. He's like, what? what, what what's that all about? I said, no, no, let me explain it to you. But it was just so strange. You're going on the park trail. Next thing you know, you see a police cruiser telling you to leave. You know, like, oh, sorry, didn't mean to break the rules. There's so, uh, but going around the neighborhood, like you were saying, Tons of people out with their dogs, you know, stopping to say hello, practicing social distancing, talking to each other. I probably talked to three or four people I've never met before and uh, had long conversations with them outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and, and going back to your, your joke of uh, running from police, there's a, there's a comedian, one of my favorites, Gabriel Iglesias, known as Fluffy. He has a joke about yeah. how he's just walking and he sees a police cruiser. Woo! What are you doing? Walking. Walking. <laughs> okay. okay, we can still walk. Um, but yeah, you know, it's it's an interesting time to be alive and it's an interesting yeah. world we live in at this time. And uh, as Dr. Kalani has said, this isn't going to last forever. It's going to feel like it's going yeah. to last forever. However, there has to be an end point at, at some near future. We just don't know when that is. Well, I keep thinking for a while, I thought it was going to be about two weeks ago, but, you know, I got past that. And, they, and uh, now I do think it's going to be sooner rather than later, but we just don't know when that sooner is going to be. Um, and I do think we'll look, look back along this time that we, we spent alone or, or in isolation as a time where we came to appreciate, you know, um, our peers, our friends, our colleagues, and, you know, really humanity, you know. Um, I hope when we do get out of this, you know, we all become better people for it and appreciate those things we took for granted. Let me tell you one thing, though, Todd, and maybe there's many others out there watching. I have never in my life gone through so many old things, organized, purged, plan to donate once all those uh, uh, those donation stores are open again. I have gone through so much, and I don't think I would have been able to do that if we weren't working from home or just being at home uh, most of the time. So there is a silver lining in all of this. So if you all are looking for something to do, go through some old, old possessions yeah. and decide, do I want to keep this? Can I donate this? Should I just throw it out? I've gotten rid of, I can tell you for a fact, 14 pounds of recyclable uh, things, old paperwork. It's a good time to get through you need some of that stuff. Yeah. You know, declutter, detox. Um, I go on YouTube all the time to find, you know, different organization ideas. And I'm, I'm a nut when it comes to stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that's how I've been able to kind of just stay sane at this time. Yeah. Just have a project and then move on to something else. I like to paint. Um, I'm going to work on a paint by numbers. I'll let you know how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's paint by numbers. You can't go wrong that much. There's, there's numbers on it for a reason. You know, um, you know, I think it's about time all of us get our house in order in one way or another, you know, whether it be literally or virtually or both. But uh, what are you noticing in social media over the long holiday weekend? Any concerns that students are getting out there? Yes, we're still getting a couple of questions in regards to um, some financial aid related items such as appeals. Um, if we're still registering for summer, um, we had one student ask or a potential student ask if we had any free online courses due to coronavirus. And we do not. We are having our summer classes offered 100% online. So you can go register now and you can do so by going to hccs.edu slash now for all of our course listings. Um, I do want to give a shout out to Student Life because last week they had a lot of events going on throughout the week uh, to engage with students. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, they're still here for you guys. Uh, this again, we've talked about how stressful this is and what a way to try to contain some sort of normalcy than by participating with Student Life. Um, Carl Mays and his and the rest of all the student life coordinators have been doing a great job engaging. Um, they had a couple of different little contests, show your spirit, everyone uh, who wore HCC gear, use a certain hashtag. And we actually have some winners that were announced last week. And you can check out, check that out on our Facebook page. Um, also, they're going to do a really cool thing every Wednesday in the evening. And it's a bingo night, which I think is really, really cool. So. Um, what a way to, yeah. what a way to engage and practice social distancing, but still, you know, be social. 
Um, again, so that's going yeah. to be taking place every Wednesday. Yes, at 7 p.m. And you can find that link of, on where to go by, again, going to our Facebook page. Are they still live streaming every Monday? I know they did last week. They had a great show and they did about a half hour live stream. I don't know. Do you know if they're doing that today as well? You know what? I actually don't know if they're going to be doing that weekly. Um, it would be great to do that. But yeah. for everyone interested, if they're going to be doing a weekly noon uh, session on Mondays, you guys just have to check out our Facebook page today at noon and see what's going on. Um, they had great engagement last week. I know they were giving major shout outs to everyone who was watching and participating. Um, they're also doing some e-gift card giveaways. So if you guys are interested in winning a free e-gift card, be sure to participate with Student Life online because it's great. It's great that they're doing this for all of our students. Well, one thing we want to let you know, students and faculty and staff, if you are watching the show and you have something you want us to bring up in the morning, as we said when we were back in our studio, it seems like a lifetime ago, but uh, you can certainly comment below in uh, the section in the comments. We can, or you can direct message us, or you can just follow us in social media or send us an email. And if you're looking to find us in social media, Brittany, how can they do that? You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all with the same handle at we are HCC and, uh, or rather at we are HCCS. And on Snapchat, we do have Snapchat. That's the same, similar handle, but at we are HCC. And be sure to use our hashtag, Todd. We've got two now. What are they? Well, so the hashtag that we use all the time is hashtag we are HCC, but we're also, while we're out of the office and going through this uh, COVID-19 crisis, we know we're going to get through this. So we've got a new hashtag, thanks to uh, Janet May, who I first saw that in uh, Talent Engagement, but the hashtag is hashtag we got this HCC. So use any of those two hashtags whenever you're posting for us and we'll make sure to share your comments and uh and leave a comment for the show and if you would find our youtube channel and subscribe to it definitely yeah um i know we've been pushing hard for facebook and youtube live stream but since we're out of the office uh, right now we're just making do with facebook but don't worry everyone after this live stream uh concludes it will post as an actual video mm -hmm. on facebook and eventually you'll see the same uh, broadcast on uh, YouTube. And tomorrow, uh, we've got a great show lined up for you. We have uh, trustee Robert Glazer is going to be on the show, and also Sue Maraska from the Vast Academy. They're going to be talking about the great work they do with the Vast Academy. Sounds great. I know we've had some questions from students in regards to our Vast students and how everything's going to play out for our students. So that'd be great to have a uh, both Sue and the trustee on tomorrow's show. That wraps it up for today for Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. Have a great day.